Watch the complete playlist on the app Pions. Download the app now. Let's start with our question number one. Uh, so question number one says, show that the function f of x is equals to 5x minus 2 is strictly increasing on the function on real number r. Okay. So if this is a linear function. For linear functions, what we do? We simply say that let us assume that say let x1 is greater than x2. Let's say x1 is any number in on the real number line for which x1 is greater than x2, right? If x1 will be greater than x2, then this is obvious that 5 times x1 will be greater than 5 times x2. That is obvious, right? Yes, because if x1 is greater than x2 on the number line, then when you multiply it with 5 times, obviously the 5 times of the x1 will be greater than 5 times x2. And if you subtract minus 2 from both, from this number 5 times x1 minus 2, obviously that will be greater from 5 times x2 minus 2, correct? So, this is nothing but if that is f of x is 5x minus 2, then 5x1 minus 2 will be nothing but our f of x1. So, here our f of x1 becomes greater than f of x2, correct? In case if you have not understood, if our f of x is nothing but 5x minus 2, then what will be our f of x1? Our f of x1 will be in place of x, we will substitute x1, right? So, 5 times x1 minus 2. So, this has to be greater and hence this is the proof that since it is greater, if we start from x1 greater than x2 and f of x1 greater than f of x2, we get such a function we call it as strictly increasing. So, this is our strictly increasing on a real number line R. Okay. Yes, let us move to question number 2. So, question number 2 says, prove that the function f of x is equals to e to the power 2x is strictly increasing on R r is real numbers so first of all we will assume that let again let x1 is greater than x2 once again if x1 is greater than x2 we will say that 2 times x1 will be greater than 2 times x2 correct and if 2 times x1 is greater than 2 times x2 we know that exponential function is an increasing function so e times 2 to the power x1 will be obviously greater than e to the power 2 times x2. And if e to the power 2x is function f of x, then what is e to the power 2x1? That is our f of x1 is greater than f of x2. Since it is greater, we started from x1 greater than x2 and we ended up at f of x1 greater than f of x2. In such situations, we will say that the given function is strictly increasing. Done. Let's move to our third question. Question number three. Now this is no more a linear function. So here we will apply a method. Let's see what that method is. So first of all, let me read the question. Question three says find the intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. So you have to figure out the intervals. Now how do we find the intervals? There are few steps. So let me write here steps just to remind you that what we have done in our uh, ordinary classes. So first of all, our first step is to differentiate the given function. Okay, If the function is given, differentiate it. Then second step is to put this differentiation first derivative equals to 0. Correct? This method is for increasing and decreasing intervals. Okay, So f dash x equals to 0. Now once you put it equal to 0, you get some values of x. x values. Let me write here x values. And whatever you got the values of x, okay, you can decide your intervals and check if the given function is increasing or decreasing in those intervals. Clear it is? So these are the three, three our steps involved here in this particular type of problems, okay. Sir, why didn't you do these things in the previous two questions? Those were linear functions. If you differentiate, you will get the constant, right? And if you put that constant equal to zero, that will be absurd understood so these this technique is when the uh, the function is of higher degree polynomial okay then we do it or it is other functions like trigonometric functions and all so let me first uh, differentiate it and see what we get it so f prime x that will be nothing but 3x square minus 24x plus 36 i hope this is clear so f dash x is our dy by dx or d by dx of f of x another way of writing the same thing clear so here derivative of x cube is 3x square 12x square is 24x and 36 is 
36 here. Correct? Now what you will do? This first step is done. So first step is done. Let's put it equal to 0. So second step is put it equal to 0. 3x square minus 24x plus 36. Correct? Now I can divide this whole equation with 3. Right? And this will give us 0 equals to uh, x square minus 8x plus 12. I hope this is clear. If you divide this whole equation with 3, 0 divided by 3 is 0, 3 by 3 is 1, 24 by 3 is 8 and 36 by 3 is 12. Now we have here x square minus 8x plus 12. You can simply do middle term splitting. So 6 2 is a 12. That will be a better option. So it will be x square minus 6x minus 2x plus 12. Correct? 8 you can split it as 6 plus 2 or minus 6 minus 2 is minus 8 right and minus 6 into minus 2 is plus 12. So this will give you a, here as x taking common x minus 6 and take minus 2 common it will be x minus 6 once again and this can be written here as x minus 2 and x minus 6. So from here if you put if two numbers are multiplied and they are getting 0, which means either one of them is equal to 0. So if you put x minus 2 equal to 0, you will get x equal to 2. And if you put x minus 6 equal to 0, you will get x equal to 6. Correct? Now you got two values of x. Once you get two values of x, what is our next step? Find the intervals. How do you find the intervals? Draw the number line. Put minus infinity on one end. Put plus infinity on the other end. Clear? And simply put these two points on the number line. So let me randomly put here this is 2 and this is our 6. Obviously 6 will lie on the right hand side of 2 right on the number line. Clear? So we got a few intervals. Now what are these intervals? Let's write it over over here. Okay. Minus infinity to 2. Okay. Then here it is 2 to 6. Then another is 6 to infinity. Clear? Now there is a shortcut method but I don't want to go into shortcut because of board exams. Right? So better always follow a simple technique. What is the technique? Choose any random number between minus infinity to 2. Okay. Let's say I am choosing here 0. 0 can lie between any number of your choice. You can try this. So I am choosing here 0, 0. You can choose 1. You can you choose 1.5. You can choose any number. I am choosing 0. Now substitute this value of 0 in f dash x. Okay. What is our f prime x? Okay. That is our, you can see on the top, it is written 3x square minus 24x plus 36, correct? Now, put here 0 in place of x. So, it will be 0 minus 24 into 0, 0 plus 36. If f, f prime x is positive, okay, in that case, this is increasing. So, in this interval, okay, this is increasing. Okay, increasing means you are putting a number from that, okay, in f prime x and if f prime x is greater than 0 okay then it is increasing in that function in that interval let's see 2 comma 6 so let me choose any number here like 2 comma 6 is uh, i am taking here 3 you can choose 4 5 6 whatever so if you take 3 in the f prime x it will give you how much 3 3 3 is a 9 and minus 24 into 3 plus 36 correct so 9 3 is a 27 minus uh, 3 4 is a 12 3 2 is a 6 72 plus 36 so it will be i'm adding last and the first term 7 6 13 1 2 3 5 and 6 63 minus you are getting a negative number so if you are getting a negative number it means simply it is decreasing in that interval correct so this function will be decreasing in our this interval this is decreasing decreasing why it is decreasing because f prime x is less than 0 negative here here it was positive correct let's choose any number from between 6 and infinity i would recommend to use numbers easy numbers like i am taking 10 because the square and multiples of 10 will be easy for me so f prime x will be equals to 3 into 10 square though calculation might be huge but it will become easy for us to multiply and all so 10 square is 100, 100 into 3, 300 minus 240 plus 36. This is obvious that 300 minus 240 is a positive value. And when you add with 36, you will get finally positive. So positive means finally the given function will be increasing in this interval. So this is our again increasing 
in the interval okay 6 to infinity which means you are getting f prime x greater than 0. So our next question says question number 4 find the intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing right. So let me write again the steps involved in checking the given function as increasing or decreasing the first step is find the derivative first find f prime x once you found f prime x now put f prime x equals to 0 and find x values okay x values once you get the x values then find the intervals and check the given interval is increasing or decreasing so first of all let's write here f prime x what is f prime x derivative of the given function and that will be here 3x square minus 12x plus 9 correct i hope this is clear now if this is 3x square minus 12x plus 9 let's put it equal to 0 and this will give you 3x square minus 12x plus 9 now let's divide the whole equation with 3 so it will be 0 equals uh, x square minus 4x plus 3 let's do the middle term splitting so this will be x square and minus 4x which is minus 3x minus x because 3 ones are 3 correct and uh, minus 3 minus 1 minus 4 plus x so here it will be 0 equals to let's take x common x minus 3 correct and there if i take minus oh i took did a small mistake here it is 3 that's what so here it is taking minus 1 common again x minus 3 correct so this will be 0 equals x minus 1 into x minus 3 putting here equal to 0 we will get x is equals to 1 and 3 let's draw the number line so on the number line as i mentioned first we have to write infinity negative infinity positive infinity now you have to denote 1 3 okay now what are the intervals here our intervals is minus infinity to 1 then we have 1 to 3 and then we have 3 to infinity. Now let's choose any number on the left hand side of 1. Any number of your choice from minus infinity to 1 you can choose. Okay. So I am choosing 0 because 0 will be easy for me to solve. And let's substitute here in f prime. So f prime 0 will be 3 times 0 square minus 12 times 0 plus 9. So this will be 0, 0 and that will be 9. So you are getting a positive number? Yes. So if it is positive, the given function in that interval is increasing. So here I am writing increasing in this interval. Why it is increasing? Because the function f prime x is greater than 0 in this interval. Let's choose 1 and 3. You can choose 1.5, 2.5, anything. I would recommend take 2. Yeah, because that will be an easy calculation. So 3, 2 square minus 12 into 2 plus 9. 2, 2s are 4, 3s are 12, minus 24 plus 9. 12 minus 24 minus 12 plus 9. And minus 12 plus 9 will be obviously negative. So in the interval 1 to 3, this given function is decreasing. Be very careful. It is decreasing in this interval. So let me write here decreasing. Decreasing in the interval okay so this is less than 0 let's choose 10 again I am choosing 10 because 10 will be easy for me to calculate so f prime 10 will be equals to 3 into 10 square minus 12 into 10 and plus 9 so 10 square is 100 100 into this 300 minus 120 plus 9 obviously you will get a positive value no need of solving everything because you don't have to show this you have to show this part in the final exams so be very careful no need of wasting time if you can directly see and judge that this is 300 minus 120 will be a positive value and plus 9 will be again positive it will be increasing so this is direct way of analyzing that yes this is our increasing function f prime x is greater than 0 clear in this interval so this was our answer to this particular question Let, let's start with our next question question number 5 it says Find the intervals on which the given function is increasing or decreasing. Now, majority of people will do what? In this question, they will try to expand it. Okay. And if you are expanding it, you will make it more complicated. 
because square and then it is cube so it will become quite complicated better is no need of squaring it or uh, expanding it simply use chain rule and this will become quite easy for you to solve so let me remind you what are the steps again uh, if this is our function our first step is to figure out the derivative f prime x second is our putting this f prime x equal to 0 and finding the x values and third is intervals so find intervals so first of all let's differentiate it f prime x that will give us using multiplication rule so multiplication rule i am differentiating this parameter first so this will give me 1 into the second parameter x minus 2 whole square then i will keep this as it is so x minus 1 as it is derivative of the second parameter that will give us 2 times x minus 2 and differentiation of x minus 2 again 1 so i am not doing anything else now let's take here x minus 2 common out and here we left with x minus 2 okay because it was whole square so i left with x minus 2 and there i left with x minus 1 into 2 clear now this will give me straight away x minus 2 into x minus 2 plus 2x minus 2 i hope this is clear let's take a recap x minus 2 multiplied with this x minus 2 i'll get x minus 2 whole square and there x minus 2 is only 1 so we left with this 2 and this x minus 1 so we left with here so 2 into x 2x and 2 into minus 1 minus 2 so let's simplify further x minus 2 will be 3x minus 2 and minus 2 minus 4 so we got our two values of x because if we are putting it equal to 0 x must be equal to either 2 from this one and from that if you put it equal to 0 now I can directly write because you are 12 standard so x will be equals to 4 by 3 okay now here last part is intervals so let's draw a number line let's put here minus infinity let's put here plus infinity we have a number which is 2 and we don't know where is 4 by 3 now many people get stuck here also sir what is 4 by 3 will it be on the right hand side of 2 left hand side of 2 how to put it on the number line simply mentally solve this 4 by 3 when you divide it will be how much it will be 3 ones are 3 minus 10 1 point something right 1 point something will lie on the right hand side of 2 or left hand side it will be on the left hand side of 2 so it will be 4 by 3 somewhere here correct so if i want to be little bit a little bit more accurate 4 by 3 is nothing but a 1.33 correct okay so this will be our uh, nearly 1.33 nearly approximately so just keep in mind this that this is 1.33 approx okay so what are our intervals our intervals is minus infinity to 4 by 3 first one second interval is 4 by 3 to 2 and the third interval is 2 to infinity correct now let's choose one number on the left hand side of 4 by 3 as obviously i always choose 0 so let's put 0 in our f prime x so f prime 0 okay will be equals to uh, let's uh, i am choosing this equation only why i am choosing this equation because i have not cancelled or taken common out from this uh, this is just a this one only this is just a simplified version so putting that 0 it will be 0 minus 2 and that will be 0 uh, minus 4 correct so that will be minus 2 and minus 4 minus plus 8 plus 8 means it is increasing in that interval so increasing increasing why it is increasing f prime x is greater than 0 correct that's why let's choose any other number let's take 1.5 right 1.3 is this one and there is 2 so let's take 1.5 that's a safe one okay so let's take f prime 1.5 that will be equals to be very careful 1.5 minus 2 and 1.5 into 3 4.5 minus 4 okay 15 3 is a 45 so 1.5 into 3 4.5 that will be minus 0 0.5 into uh, 0 0.5 you will get a negative number right so if you are getting a negative number it is straight away decreasing in this interval decreasing and this is our f prime x less than 0 you are getting correct so in negative multiplied with the positive here you will get a negative so done let's take any other number let me choose uh, 10 okay that will be quite easy for me 
so f prime 10 i am taking that will be 10 minus 2 and this will be 3 into 10 30 minus 4 now 10 minus 2 will be positive and 30 minus 4 will be also positive both are positive means increasing increasing means okay f prime x is greater than 0 so this is our increasing and f prime x greater than 0 okay. i hope this is clear let's move to question number 6 and c what are the intervals so question says uh, find the intervals in which the given function is uh, increasing and decreasing so first of all we will differentiate it so our f of f prime x will be nothing but uh, 6x square plus 18x plus 12 clear now we will put this equal to 0 so this will be 6x square plus 18x plus 12 now let's divide this whole thing with 6 so this will be equals to x square plus 3x plus 2 and let's now find the intervals it will be x square plus 2x plus x plus 2 correct because uh, 2 plus 1 is 3 and 2 ones are 2 so now next is our x square let me take here x common this will be our x plus 2 and let me take here 1 common so this will be x plus 2 so this will be straight away here x plus 1 into x plus 2 equal to 0 let's now find the intervals our x will be minus 1 here and x equal to minus 2 when you put it equal to 0 so let's draw the number line so on the number line this is our minus infinity this is our plus infinity this is our minus 1 uh, let me place here minus 2 and this is our minus 1 be very careful with the numbers now what are the intervals our intervals are minus infinity to minus 2 minus 2 to minus 1 and minus 1 to infinity now let's choose some numbers so a number on the left hand side of minus 2 will be what minus 3 or minus 1.5 okay you have to be little careful on the left hand side of negative numbers so this will be minus 3 let's put it here so f prime of minus 3 will be equals to 6 into minus 3 square plus 18 into minus 3 plus 12 so this will be 3 3 is a 9 6 is a 54 minus 54 and plus 12 you are getting a positive value so here this function is increasing in this interval so let's find it for 0 because 0 lies in the interval minus infinity to 1 so f prime 0 will be equal to 6 times 0 square plus 18 times 0 plus 12 so this will be our uh, positive so again increasing so this whole polynomial is our increasing polynomial okay i have done a mistake then let me recheck my calculations so for uh, let's check for minus 2 to minus 1 once again i think we have done a mistake so f prime oh, minus 1.5 if i take this will be 6 into minus 1.5 whole square and plus so 18 into minus 1.5 plus 12 correct so minus 1.5 square 15 uh, 15 square is 1.5 into 1.5 is 2.25 into 6 that is 13.5 okay. 13.5 i did a mistake over here last time while multiplying and this will be 18 into 1.5 that is 27 so minus 27 plus 12 so that's why 20 13.5 and plus 12 that is 25.5 that's my mistake so there is a i did a calculation mistake so this must be decreasing okay let me solve so our next question question number seven says find the intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing so our f of x is uh, x to the power 4 minus 8x cube plus 22x square minus 24x plus 21 so what we will do here is we will first again we will differentiate it so on differentiation f prime x that will give us here as 4x cube minus 24x square uh, plus 44x minus 24 correct 
so this will be our um, f prime x now put it equal to 0 so 0 will be equal to 4 x cube minus 24 x square plus 44 x minus 24 correct now uh, all the numbers are divisible by 4 so let's simplify it 0 equals to x cube minus 4 6 are 24 4 11 are and 4 6 are correct so this will be our one of the factors and now further we can simplify it okay so what we can do here is x cube minus 6x square plus 11x minus 6 so we can take x square common but that again will not work then we have to get here the x terms okay so let's choose hit and trial method so putting x equal to 1 let's see if 1 is a root of this particular equation or not so putting here x equal to 1 it will give you 1 cube minus uh, 6 plus 11 minus 6 so 11 plus 1 is 12 and 6 minus 6 minus 12 yes it is reducing to 0 so 1 is a root of this equation right so uh, what is hit and trial method you have to simply substitute here 1 minus 1 2 minus 2 3 minus 3 and so on okay if you find one of the root then other roots are quite easy how do we find that let's see again i am repeating this is a class 10th technique okay in class 10th we know that x equal to 1 becomes the root of this so x equal to 1 is the root so taking 1 on the left hand side x minus 1 this is a factor of this cubic polynomial if it is a factor we will divide this okay using long division method okay for example this and when you will divide before dividing itself i must tell you that our answer at the end the remainder must be zero if the remainder is not zero then simply it is not a root okay so this is the basic idea that if this is a root of this cubic polynomial the remainder has to be zero that that's why it is a root right like if 24 okay the root of 24 is uh, not square root be very careful root in the sense here solution when you divide here with 4 okay so it's divisible by 4 only if the remainder is 0 right it has to be so here it will be x square uh, x square into x x cube let me remind you once again why i took x square so that the first term can get cancelled okay so that is from 10th standard x square minus x square minus plus cancels out you left with minus 5 x square plus 11 x correct let's take minus 5x minus 5x into x minus 5x square just to cancel this minus 5 and that minus plus 5x correct let's subtract it plus and this will become minus you left with 6x minus 6 so taking plus 6 so it will be 6x minus 6 and you can see they both are cancelling out and you are getting 0 correct so this is our factor so we can write now what is the use of this long division method pay attention this can be written here as x minus 1 into x square minus 5x plus 6 okay i splitted it into this i converted this into this okay sir how can you say that this is equal to this let me remind you a very simple idea that a dividend dividend is equals to divisor into quotient plus a remainder right this is our basic elementary thing which we have learned in maybe 10th or 9th standard so remainder here is 0 so straight away remainder goes so divisor is x minus 1 into x square minus 5x plus 6 that will give us the dividend which is our cubic polynomial so let me remind this whole process okay just two minute process so don't imagine that like you have to learn something new this was already there in 11th, 10th standard so let me remove this whole thing okay so what is the use sir we again got an equation now be very careful you got a quadratic equation and quadratic equations are way easier than cubic or higher degree polynomial right so this will be 0 equals to x minus 1 and here we can write it as x square minus 2x minus 3x plus 6 correct so because minus 2 minus 3 minus 5 and minus 2 into minus 3 plus 6 so this can be written here as x minus 1 into uh, x taking common x minus 2 and here taking minus 3 common x minus 2 so this can be written here as 0 equal to x minus 1 into x minus 2 into x minus 3 i hope this is clear now we got clearly our three values for x 1 2 and 3 let's draw the number line so this is our minus infinity 
this is our 1 this is our 2 this is our 3 and this is our infinity so how many intervals minus infinity to 1 first interval second interval 1 to 2 third interval 2 to 3 fourth interval 3 to infinity correct so minus 1 to infinity minus 1 to 1 and let's choose 0 okay and if i put 0 see uh, I have not, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the first equation, which you can't put it here. Why I can't put it here? Because I have already divided the whole equation with 4. So when you modify something, better you don't use the last expression. Better you use our initial. If you are not modifying, simply taking common out or simplifying, then that's fine. But if you are dividing, multiplying or doing some operations, be very careful. Otherwise, there can be some errors. So f prime 0 that will be our putting here x 0 this will be whole parameter 0 this 0 and this 0 minus 24 you left with and minus 24 is negative so it is decreasing straight away decreasing clear so z minus infinity to 1 it is decreasing now 1 to 2 let's take 1.5 so now this is quite time consuming 1.5 whole cube minus 24 into 1.5 whole square plus 44 into 1.5 and minus 24 clear so now what we will do here uh, we will multiply them fast fast so 1.5 uh, into 1.5 into 1.5 so that will be 3.375 into 4 that is 13.5 over here i am putting minus 24 into 2.25 so let's find what is 24 into 2.25 that will be 54 so negative 54 it will be here and plus 44 into uh, 1.5 that's 66 and minus 24 so 66 minus 24 okay uh, plus 13.5 okay and that is giving you a positive result so it will be increasing in this interval you can simplify that and check it will give you a positive result and since it is giving positive result hence it is increasing in that interval so let me just remove this whole calculation that you don't have to show in exams okay next is 2 to 3 so let's take 2.5 that will be a better option so 2.5 into 2.5 into 2.5 that will give us 15 point and into 4 if i do this will be 62.5 that will be our first term next is 2.5 into 2.5 into 24 so that will be minus 150 and plus 44 into 2.5 that will be 110 minus 24 so 110 minus 24 plus 62.5 will give you less than 150 so again it is decreasing in this interval it is decreasing and in 3 to infinity, as I said, usually take 10. That will be a better option. So taking 10, here it will be 1000 into 4, 4000 minus 2400 plus 440 minus 24. Now you can see that 4000 is way greater than these other values. No matter if you subtract them, you will get, okay. So again, it is increasing in this interval. Done. Watch the complete playlist on the app Pions. Download the app now.